Hello everyone, and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 157. I am Shane Thomas, you can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3, and if it's not available yet, it will be soon. Code Karate has an ebook called The Five Secrets to Becoming a Drupal 7 Ninja, and it should be available as you're watching this, and if not, it will be here in a day or two, so keep an eye out for that, it's on its way. Today we're going to be going over the mobile-friendly navigation toolbar, often called just the navbar for short. The, this module in its own sense is extremely simple to use. It's just a different toolbar besides the standard Drupal administration toolbar. The only difference is it's responsive. It's a little different in how it's organized. But the tricky part of this whole module is just getting it installed. There's a whole bunch of external libraries that you need to install. And so we're going to go through the actual installation process and probably only spend maybe 30 seconds or so actually looking at the module after we get it turned on. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The first step is going to be to download the module, which I've already done you need to make sure you have the libraries module as well so if you look and in, in the navbar module directory you're gonna wanna make sure you read the readme file uh, The re c currently as it sits the readme file in the module has slightly different instructions than the actual module page itself so you might want to always look at the readme file in the module I'm sure that that's going to be corrected shortly but until it is just gonna wanna make sure you go ahead and look in the readme file instead of on the module page. So I have that open here. And it talks about um, <clears throat> how you cannot use the toolbar module with this module. It also lists the different libraries that are going to need to be installed. As you can see there's three of them, modernizer, backbone, and underscore. <clears throat> Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get started by taking and you're going through the first one which is modernizer it always provides you a link right here to get the pre-configured version so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that and this should hopefully we won't, we'll go ahead and want to minify So that should have downloaded that. Follow the instructions. It's going to say name the file modernizer.js and we'll place it in the site's all libraries modernizer directory. So we can go ahead and take this modernizer and just rename it to modernizer.js. We go to our sites all libraries directory, create a new folder called modernizer. We should be able to paste that in there. And according to the instructions, that should be the right steps. So we'll go ahead and if you notice the third step says you can download the minified version, which is actually what we might have so we might need to download the non-minified as well and I think the reason is because the the version number isn't set up in or isn't displayed in the minified version so it can't detect what version of moder modernizer it is so we're gonna go ahead and change this to min and we're gonna come back here and don't minify the source as you can see it sets the version in the JavaScript file there I don't think it can read it without that so we're going to go ahead and come back to the downloads get rid of this old one and just call this modernizer.js so now in here we're going to have a modernizer.js which I believe is only used to be able to read what the version of modernizer and then modernizer-min.js which is what's actually loaded and this is going to speed things up and all the other 
libraries have minified versions. We won't go through each of these, but it's a similar process. Use the minified version if you're actually going to use this on a production site. It's just going to make things faster for you. So let's go ahead and go on to the next one. So we'll assume that modernizer is good to go. If we come back to our readme file, backbone is the next one here. So you can download backbone.js from this link here. So we're going to go ahead and just download the entire zip file for now. We can extract that. You'll see there's a backbone.js file here. So we'll rename this just to backbone. And we'll drop that in. Okay, so while that's spinning up there, you can see we follow the directions. We downloaded the back the we actually downloaded the entire backbone folder. We could looks like we could just use backbone.js, the only thing that's actually needed. But we dropped it into the sites all libraries backbone directory. We could also download a production version that's minified, of course. We'd have to name it backbone-min.js. The last one we're gonna go through is underscore. So as you can see, here's the underscore JS file. We're going to just download the whole thing just for, to be a little quicker. We'll rename that. And we will copy underscore over. And again, the same process with the minified file. You can download a production version, which if you're launching this on a live site, you should. If you're just testing it out, you can use the, the, the development versions. So in theory, we are good to go. So we're going to go back to our site. And as, you, as you've seen, we have the navbar module already dropped in. So let's go ahead and go back here. The first thing we're going to want to do is turn off the toolbar module. In this case, we also have the admin menu module, which we were using. We're going to make sure all of those get turned off. Toolbar has already been turned off. Now we're going to go ahead and turn on the mobile friendly navigation toolbar module. Which is the module name is navbar. It says you need to enable the libraries module, so we're going to allow that. And now we are hopefully going to see a toolbar. All right. Well, it looks like we still have two. I did not get the the actual admin menu module turned off all the way, so let's go ahead and get that turned off. There we go. That should clean things up a little bit. Now we'll let this refresh. And there we go. It's looking a little better. And the benefit of this, of course, is that it's responsive. So as you can see, as you get as the width changes, the text drops out and it turns to just icons. Also, you can see it drops down on the side there. Notice how it originally drops down horizontally in a single bar, but it goes in as a sidebar once you get to a small enough screen size. So that's kind of nice. One thing you can double check on is in the status report page you can make sure that you have all, or that at least the module is able to recognize everything so you can see here navbar backbone library it detects the version 
navbar modernizer library and the navbar underscore library. So you want to make sure that all three of those are in green and of course you want to make sure you can actually see the module and then it should be pretty familiar. I mean the, the actual structure of it is pretty similar. It just provides a different interface on how to access the administration section on your Drupal site. Pretty simple module. You can probably figure it out from here but as I mentioned the install process is a little complicated it's just downloading a bunch of different libraries they're just there's just a lot needed so hopefully that helps you get it installed and get it up and running if you have any questions let me know we will see you next time